52 feet per second. I just know that's not right. There's got to be a way to measure the muzzle velocity of this cannonball. I guess I'll just have to start over at the beginning again. And this time, use the KISS principle. You know, keep it simple, sister. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite. And today we are going to try to solve the mystery that I mentioned at the end of that bowling with black powder video. And what's that mystery? That mystery is exactly how fast do those steel balls come out of that mortar? Why do we need to know? Stay tuned. You know, you could probably tell from the intro that we had tried this once before unsuccessfully. You know, for that first attempt, I built a rather elaborate fixture out in the shop. The idea was to get that mortar as close to the chronograph as possible and yet protect the chronograph because, let's face it, aiming a mortar is not precise science. And so there was there were features built in there to deflect the muzzle blast, but turns out that those features weren't adequate enough. And so while I did, I was able to miss the chronograph, we couldn't get any data. But all of this begs the question, if I'm just trying to plop one in the pond from the house, why do I care so much? And the answer is because, well, for one thing, black powder is expensive. And second, those steel balls are really expensive. And so, yes, I could put one in the pond with just a random application of internal ballistics, you know, luck, but uh, that could be expensive. And so I thought, let's go about it the right way. And if we can figure out what the muzzle velocity is, then someone smarter than me can help me with the calculations to figure out what kind of angle I need to, uh, uh, to set the mortar up to plop one in the pond. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. No, I mean, really hit subscribe. And you know what? If you click on that little bell, YouTube says you might get notified every time I upload a new video, usually on Tuesday. So with our previous failures in mind, I've got a simple fixture rigged up down at the pond. Let's adjourn from here and go down there and take a look at what I've got set up. There's the um, my siding stick, which I'll also use for a ramrod. And then down here, is the keep it simple sista fixture because of the bright sun i've got the white sheet shielding the chronograph that'll give me better results and the two by ten right there is a ramp if i accidentally aim low hopefully that will bounce the cannonball over the chronograph so i think we're all set up and ready to go I don't know. What do you think? Is it going to work? I'm hoping there's enough distance. It looks like about 20 to 25 feet between the mortar and the chronograph. I hope that's enough distance that the smoke won't be an issue. So I'm going to get loaded up and we're going to fire off around. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Um, I've got uh, 200 grains of double F black powder in there. I've got uh, my steel ball and it's wadded tightly. I've got it on a ramp so we can make our mortar act more like a cannon we, so we can shoot a, basically a straight line shot across the top of that uh, chronograph. And uh, in case you didn't know, a mortar is designed to arch a projectile in a high arc to get over the top of, uh, of barriers that the enemy might be hiding behind, whereas a cannon shoots straight line. And so I'm trying to, to uh, get some cannon properties out of this shot, hence the uh, elevator ramp. So I think we're ready to go. I'm going to light this thing and we'll get started. And I'll tell you what, you can't hear it in the background, but the bass are just going crazy on the pond. So what was that uh, Johnny Horton song I remember from the 50s? Oh yeah, we fired our muskets till the barrels melted down, then we grabbed an alligator, and we fought another round. We filled his head with cannonballs and powdered his behind, and when we touched the powder off, the gator lost his mind.
Okay, that was sweet. Let's go see if we've got a, any data. Mm, wish you could smell that black powder. Here's the wad. And let's see, you can look with me together at the same time. It did not record. Some data, some data. 265 feet per second. Yes, 265. All right. While I play that last shot again in slow motion, let me just say that the third shot in the series didn't record. And so I'm gonna skip forward to the fourth shot. You know what? It's going to be a big one because I've upped the powder from 200 grains of black powder to 300 grains of black powder. And you'll be able to tell. Trust me. Okay, no disrespect intended to my friend there, but he was getting ready to ramble on a bit and you probably would have bailed out and missed the punchline and more importantly, some more shots and booms. And while I cue up that footage, let me tell you what we've learned so far. 200 grains of double F black powder launch that steel ball at about 265 feet per second. And when we drop that into our ballistics calculator, we find that a launch angle of about 73 degrees will send that ball 409 yards downrange just about right to get us from the house to the middle of the pond, if we lived in a vacuum. And we'll see if that matters in a few weeks when I launch episode two of Plop One in the Pond. Hey, thanks for watching. It's a privilege to bring content to you. If you've enjoyed this, please hit that like button and I'll see you in our next video.